What's up, everybody? Wednesday morning. Welcome to the show. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. If you're not watching, don't hit anything. Enjoy your drive. Focus on the road. And we're going to have some fun today talking trade on fantasy football today. Are you guys ready for a fun new game? Yes. Did you create this game? I did. I I'd like to change then. my answer. I, you know, I can't <laughs> wait then. It's, it's only going to be good if it's awful. So that's fantastic. Yeah, I, is it I called think, the Circle of Trust game? No, it's not. We're definitely not doing that game again. Um, I think I think it'll be good. We also have a new Heath Sigh, so we're gonna do Sell High or <sighs> Heath Sigh today. We also have Buy Low or Heck No, which we could you know kind of maybe turn into like Hell Yeah or <sighs> like Hell Yeah or Blah. I don't know. So we have. We're going to have some fun today with sound effects. We're going to talk about the Thursday night game, which is a pretty interesting one from a starter sit perspective. You throw in Gus Edwards back out there against the Bucks defense. You go in with Tom Brady, who's got two games with more than 17 fantasy points this year. Lamar Jackson, four straight games with 18 or fewer fantasy points. Um, no, yeah, his touchdown numbers have been insane. I think he had 10 touchdowns in the first three games and three in the last four. So, uh, yeah, that will break down that game. Let's start, though, with a little trade talk. Your favorite buy low, your favorite sell high. Raise your hand if you'd like to go first with your favorite buy low. Oh, Heath was first. Heath, you're up. It is Chris Godwin. This is the buy low of the season. Second in targets in the entire NFL since he returned from his hamstring injury. Has not scored a touchdown all season long. The efficiency has not been as good. That's going to creep back up. And there's a few of these guys that we just should have, and we talked about it at the beginning of the year, we didn't even know if Chris Godwin would play week one. Probably shouldn't have played week one. Things might have gone better. But we just talked about how they are going to be better in the second half than they are in the first half. I thought he'd be better in the first half than he's been so far. But if somebody had Chris Godwin on their team, it's not been a pleasurable experience. Go get yeah. Chris Godwin. The explosion is coming. Okay. And, you know, it hasn't been that bad in PPR 11.5 to 15.5 fantasy points in all four games. Just to follow up, you know, you talked about the efficiency. I talked about this on the Monday show. Everything is down for him. It's the the A dot is down, and yet the catch rate is way right. down. The yard the uh, the yards per target, the yards per catch, the route depth is down. And when I see that, I wonder, is he still the same player? Can hmm. we count on him getting back to that form? That's the because the targets are incredible and the PPR floor is really good. So even if he doesn't, I, I would say so even, good. even if he's not the same player, he's Keenan Allen and the catch rates going to rebound. He's not going to run six yard routes and catch 50% of his targets all season long. Okay. He, he nearly had a, a, what might've ended up being a long touchdown last week. He was just off with Brady yeah, on a yeah. deep fade. And this is a good matchup for him. The Ravens have not been good against slot receivers. 75% catch rate to slot receivers. How about 5.6 yards after catch per reception to slot receiver? Both of those in the bottom 10 in the league. There's an opportunity here. And the reason why I think like his, his A dots down and all that other stuff is because Brady's getting rid of the ball quickly. He, I don't think Brady is tr very trustful of his protection anymore. He's only and he really should be because they're not doing that bad of a job but it feels like the MO of this passing game is get the ball out quick. And when he does have time to throw, it's, it's going Mike Evans way downfield more so than Godwin's way that changed on one play last week. It's the one I just talked about, yeah. but I agree. I think if you can get Chris Godwin on the cheap, he's a good one to get. All right. And, Godwin and I would Heath. just say like his, his eight odds, 6.8, it was 7.3 last year. Right. But yeah, it is low, but it was a lot higher than that two years ago. So it's lower, not much lower, but it's lower. The route depth is lower. The catch rate is weird, so hopefully they can get on the same page a little bit. It seemed like they were a little bit off uh, in Week 7. All right, Dave, who's your favorite buy low? My favorite buy low is someone you can't even use in Week 8 because he's on IR, but he's expected to be off of IR by Week 9, and it's Cordero Patterson. And what the, the timing is good to go get him because he's going to be cheap because he's still a week away from coming back, and you can go to your waiver wire and hopefully find somebody that can get you through this week whether it's somebody as good as Gus Edwards or somebody as, as low end as Michael Carter might be, or maybe even somebody worse than that. You find somebody to just plug in and use in week eight. And then hopefully fingers crossed, he's back in week nine. Can't guarantee it, but by the looks of his social media, he's running at full speed. He's looking strong. 
The Falcons' rush efficiency has been terrible since he left, so I think he's got a very obvious role when he comes back. And their schedule starting in Week 9. Pretty good for at least the next two or three games. And then I, I think by that point, if he's his old self, um, and I mean old self, uh, I, I think he's going to end up being a must-start fantasy running back. Another player that you can get on the cheap right now. Okay. Chris Godwin for Heath, Cordero Patterson for Dave as our favorite by lows. I, I know Aaron Jones was a guy we gave you last week. I can't remember. I think Zeke. You guys crushed it. Zeke, yeah. Zeke was another one. Last week. Okay. So let's keep the momentum going. Yeah, and remember that some, name when we talk sell highs. Okay. If you need some DFS help, the Fantasy Football Today DFS podcast is uh, twice a week. If you can't watch it live, you can just download it like any other podcast. But it airs Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern with Sian Ajad and Mike McClure. The Fantasy Football Today DFS podcast, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, great advice if you want to make some money on DFS. And it's just a good podcast, good one to listen to. So check it out, Fantasy Football Today DFS. All right, Heath, you can go first again. Your favorite sell high. I, I – I do want to say before I give a name that like this year in particular, the idea of selling high feels almost impossible. There are so few good players at any position that giving up someone who has both been good for this year and was not terrible last week. Well, first off, you've got like six running backs, six receivers, two tight ends and three quarterbacks to choose from. Um, It's, it's a, it's a disaster of a, I mean, that's not a, it's not a, People have talked about it. Scoring's down 22%. We've got eight quarterbacks who've scored 20 fantasy points per game. Like, it's a terrible year of fantasy football scoring. So it it is more difficult to give up guys who are in your lineup producing. That being said, I think there's probably a good sell-high opportunity on Ramondre Stevenson. He's been an absolute stud without Damian Harris. First game back was a game script that was clearly not a Damian Harris game script. This doesn't look like a particularly good offense, and I would guess at some point it's going to be a closer split than it was last week, and Damian Harris could still steal goal line carries. So if I could get high-end number two value for Ramondre Stevenson, I believe for the season right now, he's a top 12 running back, then then I would be happy to do that. Okay, Ramondre Stevenson, that was one of the ones that our listeners submitted as well. So I think people are on the same page as you got to get a lot. Ramondre Stevenson for Heath. Dave, who are we selling high on? I would sell high on Zeke, assuming that you were okay at the running back spot. If he's your third running back, or maybe even your second, and your third running back is someone who's just okay, see what you can get for Ezekiel Elliott coming off of a two-touchdown game. 34% of his PPR fantasy points this year have been touchdowns. Clear definition of a touchdown-dependent running back. He's on a good team, and his offensive line is better than we thought it would be. But he's still very inefficient, especially compared to Tony Pollard. Pollard had a lot of work last week, more than I think he had in any game this season. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I wonder if there will be more of a um, 50-50-ish split between those two. And Pollard has seen some short yardage touches as well. He also has one target in his last three games. So he's like a double sell high in PPR. Now, in saying all that, if you've got Zeke and you don't have a good running back to go in his place, if you were to trade him, then I don't blame you for hanging on to him. And I think he still has good value for however long he stays healthy for however long the offensive line is good, but he's going to need to keep scoring. And I don't know if that's something that you want to, you know, really clutch to when it comes to one of your running backs, when you're thinking about the rest of the season. Okay. To recap, Chris Godwin's a buy low. Cordero Patterson is a buy low. Ramondre Stevenson is a sell high. Got to get something really good. And Ezekiel Elliott is a sell high. Uh, would you rather have Cordero Patterson or Ezekiel Elliott rest of season? I have Zeke one or two spots higher on the trade chart. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather have Zeke. I, I don't, I don't think there's really a big gap between the three of them, though. Ramondre and Patterson. Yeah, okay. Ramondre is the one you could get the most for in trade, though. Right. I think the perceived value on him is much higher than the other two. Agreed. I don't know that the actual value rest of season will be that much higher than the other two. I almost wonder if I have Patterson too high on the trade chart. I've got him ahead of Eno Benjamin, Brian Robinson, Pollard, Gus. What do you think? Is he ahead of those guys? I, uh, yeah, ahead of them. In yeah. perceived value, I don't feel like he is, but 
in actual rest of season value. I could believe it if he's bad. Like the whole mystery is, and I, right. I, I, I appreciate saying. the investigative work on the social media. I hope that's true, but we don't know when he's coming back. That's, that's a great point. Uh, yeah, he's been, and Tyler Algier really has not been running the ball nearly as well as Cordell Patterson has. So it's not like he should lose a lot of touches, but, they don't throw the ball to anyone, especially but their running backs. So he's it, he's another guy who's not really going to stand out in PPR, which is just a little unusual. That's probably what you thought you were going to get from Patterson when you drafted him. It, and it's like they they run the ball as much or if not more than everybody. Um, but he's 31, and he got hurt at the end of last year, and he got hurt at the beginning of this year. How many t- – even if he's 100% healthy the rest of the season, what do you think their plan is for how many touches you give Patterson? How many touches they're going to give Patterson? Yeah, they're going to give him a ton because they. I I think Algier separated from the rest of the muckety muck that they have last week. He played sixty percent of the snaps, but I don't think that they're ready to well, entrust no, they, in him when they've got Patterson. I think they're going to use Patterson as long as I, he's available. I think they would. I just they they need Patterson to be ready for the playoffs, and he <laughs> can't survive. <laughs> Well, I, don't I don't know why you guys are laughing. I don't they're think, currently I don't tied for first place, and their next six games are against terrible teams, except for one. I, I'm laughing not at you. I'm laughing at the reality that we yeah. can't rule them off from being a wild card team. Uh, or maybe why? even the division winner. I can't rule it out. Why did, and it sounds why? silly, but I get it. Did the Giants have to play in the NFC East? You know, It would be so much better if they were just in the NFC South. Um, all right. Uh, so those are some good trade candidates. A lot more later on in the show. News and notes a lot for Thursday night, obviously, because those are the only teams practicing and giving practice reports. Gus Edwards was limited. He's going to play, but they list him as limited. Rashad Bateman, same thing. Ronnie Stanley, their left tackle. He's questionable for this game uh, at Tampa Bay on Thursday. Julio Jones was limited. He might play. Tampa Bay's secondary is worth watching here. Carlton Davis, Sean Murphy Bunting, Antoine Winfield all did not practice. Uh, and those are very important players for them. Akeem Hicks was listed as limited, which is a good sign. He did not practice at all last week. So their run defense has been very inconsistent. The Bucs were used to it being among the best in football. Uh, they signed Akeem Hicks in the offseason to replace Ndamukong Sue. They've gotten very little from him. Hopefully he can make his way back. Uh, those are your Thursday night injury updates. Kansas City defensive end Frank Clark has suspended two games for violating the personal conduct policy. Uh, Frank Clark, very important player for the Chiefs. On um, by this week, he'll miss Tennessee in week nine and Jacksonville in week 10. Saints cornerback Bradley Roby is on IR with an ankle injury. Just a reminder, IR is a minimum of, of four games out. And the Saints secondary is extremely thin right now. Tennessee wide receiver Kyle Phillips on IR with an ankle injury and the Cowboys trying to shore up their run defense acquired Jonathan Hankins, a defensive tackle from the Raiders for a sixth round pick. We're going to preview that game shortly. And then after that, we'll talk all trade value stuff basically and play a new game, which involves Halloween candy. So you guys need to be thinking about your favorite and least favorite Halloween candies. Hmm. Uh, But here's our email of the day. Something I didn't really talk about yesterday but very relevant. Frank, actually, Dave, this email is from Frank. It says, I don't pretend to be a producer. Go to Madison. I don't pretend to be a producer, so please ignore me if you don't want to do this, but I'm not going to ignore you. We want to do it. Can you do a quick segment on players you'd grab off waivers now or buy low now leading up to the trade deadline next week? Rumors on mm-hmm. Hamler, Judy, Kareem Hunt, et cetera. It's a good yeah. question. The trade deadline is a real thing in football now, which is very fun. And who should we be looking at here to gain or lose value, I guess, as the trade deadline approaches? Uh, Dave's face. Yeah. We should go back. If you're not watching on YouTube, this is why you should. Because my I made the hmm when Adam said the trade deadline is a real thing in the NFL now. Yeah. Dave's, Dave's face went, hmm. Yeah. I like there have been <laughs> two trades. <laughs> I I used, would used, not be surprised of consequence. I would not be surprised if there was not another trade of fantasy football consequence before the trade deadline. I hope there is, but I just I don't want people to go too far out of their way speculating on what could happen at the trade deadline when maybe absolutely nothing happens. That being said, Chase Claypool, Kareem Hunt, um. I guess Cam Akers, maybe. Uh, 
Cam Akers hasn't been traded yet. I have a hard time believing Elijah that Moore. He's going to get traded think, now. I, I don't believe Moore. they will. They wouldn't trade Denzel Mims. <laughs> <laughs> they can't trade Elijah Moore right now. Um, Agreed. Kareem Hunt, I think, is a big one. Just don't drop him. Just don't right. drop Kareem Hunt. And I got into a, like a mini beef in the YouTube comments with somebody who said that we were crazy for recommending dropping Kareem Hunt for Gus Edwards. Oh, I don't think that's crazy. I, 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 I think if that, if Kareem Hunt's legitimately your worst player or your worst running back and you need a starter, I'm starting Edwards over Hunt for the foreseeable future. The problem is I get that guy. Like, I, first off, I think the crazy thing you did was arguing with somebody in the YouTube comments. But yeah, um, I don't. Cus Edwards doesn't have Kareem Hunt upside. And I'm not That's fair. And I don't know that their weekly expectation is more than like a point or two difference. Mm, see, that's where I think we're a little bit off because I've seen Hunt. I, I've studied him literally every week. I write about him every week. And it used to be he gets 15 touches reliably. And if he scores, you're going to love it. And if not, well, at least he'll give you like 60 total yards. Last two weeks, they have not used him at all. And I wonder if he is falling out of favor a little bit in Cleveland. And if he stays through the trade deadline, I'm not sure he's going to rebound and be a 15 touch guy unless something happens to Chubb. So I can't wait for that. Like it's already too late. If you want to get Gus Edwards, unless your waivers run tonight, I, I think that you, you, you can't wait when it comes to running backs off the waiver wire, man, there's too many other people in your league who want them. So I, I, I completely understand having Gus ahead of Kareem Hunt rest of season. I agree with it. I said it. Uh, that being said, yes, Hunt could get traded. Where could he go and have instant top 20 fantasy value? Anywhere, almost. Which team is trading for a 27-year-old running back with dwindling efficiency the Rams. and bad PR? It's the only team I could think of. I That's think we're the past one. the bad PR thing. I hope so, but... I mean, it's still going to be a thing. It's going to be tied to him for as long as he's in the NFL. Um, but no, the Rams are the first one. Give me another. Um, Take the rest of the show. There, I'm sure there's another one. I'll think of another one. Give me another team that's still believing in a playoff spot that needs a running back. And that well, would give up a late pick. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. The Look, Falcons. Let's, 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 uh, <laughs> let's move on. Are the Panthers? No, they're not, they're, no, they're not competing. Oh, they're not. No, they're not competing. They're only uh, a game back. Can't be that far back, but they're not competing. They're one They've game got back. two good running backs already. They don't need Kareem Hunt. All right. Uh, okay. I got to uh, – let's let's speed things up here. Uh, let me talk to you about Grammarly. All right. Grammarly is if you're doing any writing, right? even if you need to write – in email to people at work, give a presentation to people at work. It's something for school, whatever it is. For me, on the rare occasion that I write something for the website, it does happen, I use Grammarly. I write something, I throw it into Grammarly, I get some quick tips on how to make it better. And this is going to save you a lot of time, all right? You don't have to proofread 100 times or ask other people, hey, is there any way I can make this better? Grammarly is going to do that for you. So it's an amazing service. By the way, let me give you the code right now to get you a discount on Grammarly Premium. Grammarly.com slash FFT. G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash F-F-T. Uh, get you 20% off uh, Grammarly Premium. So what do you do? So first of all, there's a free version of it. It can be easy to make mistakes on important emails and documents when you're busy. The free version of Grammarly offers comprehensive spelling, grammar, and punctuation suggestions. Instantly proofreading and providing suggestions so your writing always comes across as professional and mistake-free. If you want to upgrade to the premium... Grammarly Premium's clarity-focused sentence rewrites keep your writing clear and to the point. So you can get through it. It's just a better way to communicate. Get rid of those extra words. More powerful, more clear, more concise. This is the way to do it with Grammarly Premium. Get an instant take on how your message comes across with Gram Grammarly's free tone detector, so you're going to always make the right impression. Again, we can give you a discount. Get more time in your day with confidence in your work with Grammarly. Go to Grammarly.com slash FFT to sign up for a free account. And when you're ready to upgrade to Grammarly Premium, get 20% off for being our listener. That is 20% off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash FFT. You have to spell Grammarly right. I mean, come on. Uh, Baltimore is at Tampa Bay. Na, 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 na. Yeah. All right, so the Tampa Bay secondary is beat up. 
they're good defense so far, six in yards per play allowed, but really shorthanded perhaps in this game. Uh, let's talk about the Ravens first, and let's talk let's talk about the quarterbacks. Actually, let's go position by position here. I see by your rankings, you have no hesitation in starting Lamar Jackson despite four straight underwhelming games. Uh, Heath, discuss. No, Heath, Heath. Rosen. Oh, all right, Heath. Who would have internet connections at a time like this? We'll uh, we'll get Heath back. Internet connection issues. Sorry. Uh, okay. Can I discuss Lamar Jackson and why you should still start? Mm, I don't know. I think we maybe we'll just sit here in silence and wait for Heath. Uh, no, you know, it's a better idea, Dave. Why don't you talk about it? Go ahead. Okay, here's what I think. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. Uh, okay. Uh, he's got too much upside. You know that he's got 30-point potential. It's a short week. He's still going to continue to run the ball. He only attempted 16 passes last week. I don't think that's going to be the norm for him. I do think the Ravens are going to try and control the clock and run the ball with Gus. I like Gus. We'll talk about him in a minute. But you know with Lamar Jackson, he's going to get, first of all, he's going to get numbers with Mark Andrews last week. Total anomaly. And hopefully Rashad Bateman's okay. Hopefully Duvernay gets involved a little bit more. And Lamar Jackson, you just keep rolling with him. I know he's been bad for the past few weeks. I don't think he's doing anything that's like completely changed him as a fantasy quarterback that makes you go, uh, yeah, I better start Derek Carr instead. I, the, right. I don't even know how much you want to get into it, but it's just the, yeah. the touchdowns. The first for first three weeks, Lamar Jackson was part of every offensive touchdown they scored. Every pass, every passing touchdown, every rushing touchdown, Lamar Jackson was part of it. In the last four games, you're starting to see the running backs do more. Dobbins, Drake, Edwards, they have a combined five rushing touchdowns. Jackson has two passing, no rushing in the last four games, but I... It just seems kind of fluky, but also their offense isn't scoring that much. They haven't scored more than 23 points in any of those games. Heath, uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's like just as the first three weeks were not indicative of what was going to happen the next three weeks, I don't believe the last three weeks are indicative of what's going to happen the next three weeks. Last four weeks. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right, fine. Start Lamar plus, Jackson. Plus the matchup is favorable. Yeah. How about Brady? Start or sit? Start him. Quarterbacks He's a start, week. but I mean, there, there's bust potential. I can tell you, I've spent more time studying Tom Brady this week than I have maybe at any other point since he was a young guy in the league. Uh, last week, I don't think the Panthers did anything special to make him look bad. I think he made mistakes that made him look bad. But he also, everybody saw the drop touchdown from Mike Evans. That was one of three plays that were really close to being huge, and then we would have no questions at all about Brady. Here's something that stood out to me. Um, this this Ravens defense, they they know how to get after quarterbacks, and they also know when to not get after quarterbacks. They barely blitzed and barely pressured Joe Burrow a few weeks back. They just played a lot of heavy zone defense and kind of dared him to throw into it, and Burrow didn't have 20 fantasy points. And mm -hmm. I wonder if that's what they do against Brady because that's what a lot of teams have done against Brady, including uh, the Panthers blitzed a little bit more than most defenses against Tampa Bay. But the, the Panthers didn't get a lot of pressure on him. Brady had time to throw, and he had a lot of self-inflicted mistakes. So I, I wonder if the Ravens start out their game plan by just rushing four, hoping that some guys get there and, and sack him, of course, but also having seven guys back, and they've got a good secondary to try and make it hard on Brady to complete passes at any length, especially since they know that Brady, in his mind, has to get rid of the ball quickly. One other historical fact, and you don't have to pay attention to this if you don't want to, He's played the Ravens under John, Har John Harbaugh 10 times in his career. He's thrown multiple touchdowns three times and topped 300 yards four times. And I would argue that this is probably one of the, not the worst offenses that he's been dealing with as far as offensive line and everything else, but not one of the best either. So there, there's bust potential for him. He might come through with like 275 and one. I just don't know if I have the stones to start Derek Carr, oh, Aaron that's Rodgers, that's and those one guys. For me. I have that decision to make, Carr versus Brady. I haven't made yeah. it yet. I don't know if I'm ready to I don't know if I'm ready to start Carr. The one guy who I am ready to start is Tua. He's got healthy receivers and he's playing the Lions. I'll buy into that over Brady. Heath, Tua or Brady? Tua. Carr or Brady? Brady. Cousins or Brady? Brady. Cousins. Um Dak Prescott against the Bears or Brady? Brady. Dak. 
By the way, Dave, Tom Brady is being blitzed less percentage-wise, less this season than at any point in the last 12 seasons. And it's so the weirdest like thing. No, it makes sense that- because you can probably get pressure with four. He does get rid of the ball quickly. And, uh, right. and yeah, I mean, and that's the real reason why. It, it's, it is so obvious. It is a lack of weapons. That is because it is not Tom Brady. What do you mean? Up. They, they don't, don't have Gronk. They don't have Brown. They have okay. They, they don't have relative a, to league average. He does not have a lack of weapons. I disagree. First of all, if you look at the full season, Mike Evans has missed some time and got kicked out of a game. Chris Godwin has missed a lot of time, and I just don't think Godwin is the right is is Godwin right now. Um, I mean, I watched I watched it all last week. Godwin was not getting Evans was getting open consistently. I really don't think Chris Godwin was, and they are really not on the same page. Those two, and uh, and look at the red zone numbers. His three seasons with uh, with uh, was goal to go numbers, right? Goal to go completion rate three seasons in Tampa Bay sixty two percent, fifty percent, thirty seven point five percent. Oh, goal it was so frustrating rate. last week. Okay, so forty eight point nine percent, forty one point seven percent, thirty one point three percent. They are missing Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Brown. It's a big deal. Okay, but if Tom Brady needs Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski, and Antonio Brown to be a good quarterback, then he's not a good quarterback. I disagree. He is a very good quarterback. He makes throws that most quarterbacks cannot even dream like, of making. It, who, Justin Herbert not, or Tom Brady had better weapons this year. It doesn't. Uh, it's the point is. I'll say he Herbert. is not getting. He is Herbert, not getting enough from his guys. when they're healthy. Yeah. Well, they haven't been healthy all year. That's the point. Same saying, thing with year, Tampa's guys. Same this thing with year, Tampa's. who's had better talent helping him? Okay. Well, overall, then you might get me to say Brady because if we're not if we're taking injury out of it and what's happened so far this year, then yeah, Brady definitely has. Who's Herbert? offensive line's been better this year? Her, he's had better than Herbert? I don't yes. know. Offensive line-wise? Uh, I'm not sure if PFF would agree, but it kind of feels no, like I mean, it. is his weapons? I mean, Herbert, like Eckler's a big deal for Justin Herbert. Leonard Fournette right, but Fournette's been, been catching passes, he too. Passes. He doesn't really do anything with it. Like, Eckler's a like, weapon. Like, I'm starting Tom Brady without hesitation this week, and the quarterback position's so awful that I can't see that changing in the next month. But... To give him a free pass and say the problem is Tom Brady's weapons it just and seems insane. And his line. No, I don't think it's the line. He, he, well, threw, he threw like four different two hoppers in that game. Oh, yes. You know, yes he, just threw two straight, he, threw two, he threw two straight four hoppers. They were both co- to completely covered wide receivers. They were throwaway passes in the pocket. He just couldn't. No, no, did you I, see? Are those the passes inside the ten that you're thinking of? Yes, those two back to back to Evans and God. I think I I don't think he meant to two hop them. There is no chance that plays. Patrick Mahomes doesn't fit that into the window there. Uh, Patrick Mahomes might be the best quarterback. Okay, I'm saying Tom Brady is still one of the best quarterbacks. He's still he be through two balls up the seam in the. If he's still one of the best quarterbacks, then we shouldn't have any questions about starting him. But it's not because he just doesn't have any weapons. He, I don't think there's any issue on that. Heath. I think it just so depends far. on who else you have. This year, he has had limited weaponry. That's what I'm saying so far. Compared it's, to what he's had the past two years, I agree. Yeah, yeah. big time. But yeah. I don't think that's the only thing. All right. I think it's uh, a little bit of everything. Running backs, guys. I, I just imagine Aaron Rodgers, if you listen to our podcast, hearing us give, giving excuses to Tom Brady for not having enough weapons. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers says, what are you talking about? <laughs> But no, but, but but like I mean, Evans missed time, got ejected. Godwin missed time. It just hasn't been the same, you know. Um, for what it's worth, Braid has missed time. He's been a red zone guy for him. It's been end zone guy for him. All right, so the running backs, <laughs> start start Fournette, right? Just start him. Just start yeah. them both. All right. Well, okay, Gus, where do you have start. Gus ranked? I've got him as a top twenty four running back in non PPR and just on the fence in full PPR. Okay, I shouldn't have said start them both, but I yeah, I guess is fine. Whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, you can't quite say that. Like, did you start Raheem Mostert over him? Oh, yeah. T- Raheem yeah. Mostert, the borderline top 12 running back. You mean Raheem, Raheem Most start of the week? Mostert, must, must. How about Devin Singletary against the Packers? I'd go Singletary, too. Yep. How about Najee Harris at the Eagles? Uh, I'll start Gus in non-PPR. I- Okay, you're taking your you're rescinding. Uh, I, I'm rescinding. I, I the will Gus rethink Edwards. Gus in full PPR. Yeah, I, how, I was really uh, fired up over this Tom Brady weapons thing and wasn't thinking. How about uh, Gabe Davis against Green Bay, or Gus Edwards? Gabe. Gabe. Yeah, I, I am curious to see because because Gus Edwards had ten carries in the first half, 
and six in the second half. Kenyon Drake outcarried him in the second half, and I mm-hmm. short week. You worried at all about the workload for Gus? No, the opposite. Yes. He played 36% of the snaps and saw 36% of the rush attempts. If they run the ball 35 times instead of 50, he might have 10 carries. I think yeah. they give him more work this week. It was his first game back. He deserves a, a pass week. for that. A short week, though, that's the only No, nope. I think that's why they tried to let up on him a little bit. He played 23 snaps and had 16 carries, and I think that they, I think they wanted to keep him relatively fresh. You're getting a running back who's only played one game, played 23 snaps, coming in against a Tampa Bay run defense that just made Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard look like Larry Zonka and Mercury Morris. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, not. They, those guys aren't as good as they looked. Tampa Bay's defense, especially if they can get Gus into the second level, oh, man, he's going to have some huge runs, and I think he's a great candidate to score. I love the fresh legs on Thursday night. It worked out for Eno last week. I'm kind of hitting myself over not having Eno ranked high enough. I'm not going to make that mistake again in non PPR with Gus Edwards. Okay. Well, you know, those Thursday night games are always so good for fantasy, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on. that, that Bucks defense is going to be tired. Gus is not going to be tired. I just think we got to keep an eye on Akeem Hicks too. I don't know how much you care about no, that. No, that makes that, that'll make some difference. And we've got to see just who's fresh and ready to go for the Ravens on their offensive line. But uh, I was, I was very impressed with how they blocked for Gus. Gus did a good job following his blocks. I think some of how he did too had to do with how Cleveland's run defense is. Right. Yes. Certainly inside the red zone, both of his touchdowns, the Browns' defense was sleeping at the wheel. All right, come on, guys. They were <sighs> what do you don't don't guys me? Uh, all right, come on, come on. Let's he wants to hurry up and get to the game. That he invented. Heath, you can the talk about the wide receivers. Game. You can talk about the wide receivers. Go ahead. Um, you should start Mike Evans. You should start Chris Godwin. You should not start any Tampa Bay wide receivers. Any Baltimore, you should not start any Baltimore wide receivers. Baltimore wide receivers, yes. Oh, man, I can't get if you can't get the teams right, Heath. I can't give you the. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not asking for more. Uh, start Mark Andrews, Heath. You get Cade Otten. Here's your stat of the game. Baltimore has allowed 11.6 or more PPR fantasy points to a tight to five tight ends in seven games. They are Conklin, Gasicki, Hurst, Bellinger, and Njoku. None of them had more than seven targets. Starter sit Cade Otten. Who? Has a pretty uh, just a twelve percent target share in two games without Cameron Braid, but still good production. Yeah, I'd rather start. I'd rather stream Irv Smith. I'd rather stream Greg Dulcich. Um, I would not start K. Dotton over Kyle Pitts, but he's other than that, he's fine. Dave K. Dotton or Kyle Pitts? I'll take Otten. Yeah, he, yeah, he's he's given you about 10, 10 to eleven PPR fantasy points in each of the two games that Braid has missed. But Brady has thrown so many passes in those games, so he doesn't have a high target share. If Brady keeps throwing 40-plus times, should be good for Otten. He's only 11% rostered as of right now. And Baltimore's DST, starter sit. They've been great. I'd start. Top 12 option. Top 10, actually. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, it's all trade. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Time now for buy low or heck no and sell high or <sighs> Heath sigh, which means don't sell high for some reason. Uh, all right, buy low or heck no. Well, the first one was Chris Godwin, so that's the buy low. Uh, Alex says, Kyle Pitts, would you buy low on Kyle Pitts? Anticip- he is anticipating a quarterback change soon. And then he says, parentheses, I'm just trying to make myself feel better about drafting Kyle Pitts. Uh, it's a uh, heck no. Heath, Heath, you there? Again, he froze. Poor Heath. Mm, he's so the reason why I said heck no on Pitts is because I think eventually people are going to start dropping him. So what? What would you give up? What would you seriously trade for Kyle Pitts? Okay, if you're streaming tight ends anyway, and here comes Kyle Pitts, who's had maybe what two, three games this year with ten PPR points. Is that right? I, what do you what do you give up for a guy like that who doesn't have a ton of upside? I, I don't I don't think you give up that much. So Heath, you almost want to wait till somebody drops him. Heath, buy low or heck no on Kyle Pitts? Uh, buy low in Dynasty, heck no in redraft. Okay, buy low or heck no on Leonard Fournette. Do you guys even consider him a buy low coming off a terrible game? I mean, if you can, you should. But most people who have Leonard Fournette still value him as a top twelve fantasy running back i would rather have leonard fournette than um 
Ezekiel Elliott for sure. Oh yeah. Would, Would you, you rather have Fournette or ETN? Oh. Oh, ETN. Full reversal here. Uh, uh, yeah. I still think I'd have Fournette, but it's really close. I was going to ask Fournette or the young emerging Ken Walker, uh, Damian uh, Pierce, Travis rookies. ETN. All of them over Fournette. Rookies and ETN. But maybe you could turn Fournette into Ramondre Stevenson. Or uh, vice why? versa. Turn Ramondre into Fournette. There you go. Okay. Uh, Mike wants to know, would you buy low on A.J. Dillon? Buy low or heck no? Heck no. I'd put him in the same category as Pitts. Wait for somebody to drop him and then just put him on your bench. From Gabagool, would you buy low on Khalil Herbert? I don't think anybody's cutting him, so you would have to give up something for Khalil Herbert. Uh, if, if, the, if the something to get him is really minimal, if it's a bench player, I don't hate it. Heath? Yeah, I mean it's uh yeah, that's a weird one because he's was good and just played. He's probably got a bigger role now than he did two or three weeks ago. So, I guess you're just hoping he takes the entire job from David Montgomery. I don't think that's very likely without an injury. Um, it would have to be very cheap. I think that's what Herbert and Dylan kind of have in common is that they've got that Kareem Hunt upside if the running back that they share with disappears for a few games yeah i do but think i like herbert more than dylan right now it's a much i think i do too i agree which is what we, that that's the thing no one's gonna cut khalil herbert unless they just don't have the bench space to carry him mm-hmm. people are gonna start cutting aj dylan because the packers aren't using him that much all right if next you could, one, like next one. if you could turn uh let's say you're good at receiver and you've got bateman or cooks you might be able to trade one of those guys for khalil herbert Okay, next one from Good Citizen. Buy low or heck no on James Conner. <laughs> um, if if I could buy low in the like bench player range, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's there's still top fifteen touchdown dependent upside here. Yay for top fifteen touchdown potential upside. So, would you give up maybe Jacoby Myers for James Conner in a PPR league? Oh yeah. Probably, but I, I also can't help but think that Eno is the running back of choice in Arizona and that when Connor comes back, he's the one B and Eno is one A. Would you give up Christian Kirk for James Connor? No, definitely not in PPR. Probably not in non PPR. All right, let's do sell high or Heath side, sell high or Heath side. Our first one comes from Jonathan King, sell high or Heath side on Gus Edwards. Sell high. If you can. Uh, from Aaron, sell high on James Robinson. He is washed. Mm. I I kind of agree. If you can, you should. I, I think you'll have an easier time selling high on Gus and Michael Carter than you would on James Robinson. Yeah, I don't know if, but Carter might be a buy low now. Like, I think a perception will be that Robinson's eventually going to be the best running back in that backfield, and I don't believe that. So, um, yeah, I agree. I, I'd rather have Carter than Robinson. So, where buying low on Carter, I think, is going to be really hard to do. Would you buy high on Carter right now? Would you give up uh, Adam Thielen in PPR for Michael Carter? Probably not, but I'd rather have Carter than Gus. I think I'd rather have Gus, but it's it's kind of close between those two. I wouldn't give up Thielen and PPR for any running back that we've talked about in the last 30 seconds. About this one. Buy low, uh, sell high, sorry, sell high or Heath sigh on Saquon Barkley. No. Heath sigh. Uh, don't sell high. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. Like I, I, I could understand just not wanting to roster running backs, um, because uh. eventually he's <laughs> going to get hurt. Sure. Right. How about if I come at you with Leonard Fournette and DeAndre Hopkins just for Saquon Barkley? What do you do? see a Saquon? I agree. That's an example of selling high on Saquon, but that's the type of sell high I'm looking to do. I think uh, I think let's give a little bit of love to the running backs. The, the fact that Jacksonville's got 
a much better backfield now. Uh, Ken Walker has been great. Damian Pierce has been great. And he's got three games where he's got two or more. I think he's got what nine catches in his last three games or something like that. Um, yeah, it's things to lose Brees Hall. That that's a, that's a crusher, but at least you get Travis Etienne sort of as a replacement. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like running back is not so bad. you the injuries are always a big concern, but yes. quarterback really is, is terrible right now. Tight end is, is as bad as I've ever seen it. I yes. feel, yes. um, I feel like running back has gotten a lot better from the first few weeks of the season was all the great running backs were, were struggling basically. And now I think running back's really not so bad. You guys feel that way? Yes. No, I do. No. And and I'll give you the proof of that. Uh, I've got James Robinson, Brian Robinson, Kareem Hunt, and a handful of leagues. Not all three on every roster, but at least one of those guys, it feels like, on every roster. And I'm trying to trade those guys into something that helps my team at, like, wide receiver. Because you know me. I'm never drafting a ton of wide receivers. And I'm having a hard time moving them because – Everybody else in the league seems to have two competent running backs that they feel good about starting. So it, it, it's, it is definitely deeper than it's been in the past. I agree with your sentiment. One other thing on just on the topic of the Jaguars running backs, there's got to be an opportunity for someone else to, to play behind ETN. ETN's not going to play 100% of the snaps, otherwise he'll break down. They've got Jamichael Hasty behind him. They've got Snoop Connor behind him. I've made a play to get Hasty on a couple of my benches just to see what happens. He's been serviceable before. He's played in passing downs roles before. So in deeper leagues, you can look to grab him off the waiver wire. I'm I'm pretty sure he's still available in a lot of leagues. Oh, he is. All right, a couple more here. Sell high or he's sigh on Josh Jacobs from Eric. Hey, Eric. Sigh. Heath sigh. Uh, I, agree, I agree with the Heath sigh. I But I would if someone offers me Fournette and Hopkins, using the earlier example, to get Jacobs, I'm taking it. Who so would you not give up for for Fournette and Hopkins? I mean, that like basically Eckler. anyone in, you wouldn't give up Eckler for Eckler Fournette. and McCaffrey are probably the only two. Travis okay. Kelsey, uh, uh, cups close. All right, last one from Nick. Sell high or Heath sigh on Ken Walker. No. If someone wants to overpay, same thing with Saquon. Mm. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to let them overpay, <laughs> but I think he's a top ten running back rest of season. All right, so it's a, it's a Heath side. Don't sell high on Ken Walker. Now we've got a new game. Let's see if it goes well. It almost certainly will not. It is called Follow the Leader, and it is the Halloween candy edition. I'm going to ask you for the leader in a particular NFL statistic. Every time you guess right, you get to put any Halloween candy you want in your bucket. After three wrong guesses... Your opponent gets to put any disgusting Halloween candy in your bucket, and we will keep track of the buckets. Schaefer can keep track of the buckets and see who has a better one at the end of our game. That makes sense? Yeah. You need to know your favorite Halloween candies and your least favorite ones, and we'll see who has a better bucket. By the way, since Snickers is a is a frequent sponsor and has sponsored our draftathon, let's just go look, we love them. They're going to be the good one of the good ones, but uh, I don't think I have to tell you that because they're obviously an amazing game. I think we should start with a king size Snickers in each of our buckets. Fair enough. You each get it's the free space, a king size Snickers in your bucket. Okay, so I like this game already. A right answer, you get to pick some candy. Going to be a while indeed. Three wrong answers, you get to put a, a, a bad one in your your uh, opponent's bucket. Who leads the NFL in passing yards per attempt? Heath, go ahead. You could just shout answers. Wait, out. Yeah, I don't know how this two Tua. Tua t- congratulations. You got it. Uh, the first guess, Tua Tagovailoa leads in passing yards per attempt. What would you like? Uh, what candy would you like, Heath? I'll take a uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Okay, you've got a Snickers and a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Thomas, are you keeping track of this? Give me a thumbs up backstage there. All right, well, he's got it. Adam, uh, I didn't know that we had to buzz in. But you just sat there silently for five seconds. I mean, I don't know. It wasn't five seconds. Heath said Heath at the jump, and I didn't know mm-hmm. whether I should just blurt out Tua or not. Do you know the answer? Yeah, I was going to guess Tua. Well, oh. <laughs> I'm giving it to Heath. That's fine. Now I now I know all the rules for Follow the Leader Halloween Candy Edition. I can't wait for Follow the Leader Thanksgiving Edition. Yeah, maybe. We'll see how this goes. So I, I just briefly on Tua. What does that stat mean to you? He is just ahead of Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, and Geno Smith to lead the NFL in yards per attempt. 
which you know, and and he has only a three point five percent touchdown rate. Uh, what does it all mean to you? Jimmy Garoppolo has been a yards per attempt king for the past couple. It's the best stat for him every year. Yeah. Um, and that's because Kyle Shanahan's offense produces a lot of yak, and yak is really good for quarterbacks' yards per attempt. And Tua has Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. We should anticipate him continuing to have a very high yards per attempt, but not quite this high. Hold he's on, I want to see something. Yak. He's only 15th in yak per completion. It's good, it's not great. He's actually throwing the ball downfield. Eighth in air yards per pass attempt. So it's not just the short stuff turning into long stuff. It's a mix, which I think is good. But but at the end of the day, he too only has one good fantasy game. Almost all of his production was against the Ravens. Yeah, it, that's a little bit fluky. But um, I I think he's a top five quarterback this week. So I'm starting him. I don't have him that high, but I do think he's a must start. In the first three weeks of the season, week one, 8.2. Week two, 9.4. That was the game against Baltimore. Week three against Buffalo, 10.3 yards per attempt. The two games since he's played against Cincinnati, 7.9. And last week against Pittsburgh, 7.5. I got. I wonder, I wonder if they're kind of changing their, their tune on what they want to do. With he him. was really bad last week. Like He was very lucky he didn't have four interceptions, yes. and he missed guys. And even when he completed passes, they were not in yakable spots for those guys to catch passes. I just I think that was a blip. And also, 7.5 yards per attempt is above average. Uh, somebody asked me to take out the Baltimore game and see where he ranks. Well, I actually did that. Weeks 1, 3, and 7, Tua was 5th in yards per attempt, 4th in passer rating, 19th in touchdown rate. So pretty good to be 4th in passer rating. He was 5th in Week 7? No, overall Weeks 1, 3, and 7, the other three games that Tua has played without leaving injury for injury. Okay, you are in yards per attempt. Yeah. All right, moving on. Heath, you got a delicious candy bucket there. Dave, you already ate your Snickers, so you got nothing. Who leads the NFL in carries inside the five-yard line among, among running backs? Jalen Hurts is number one. Who leads all running backs in carries inside the five-yard line? Dave. Dave. Yeah. I buzzed in twice. Jamal Williams. Incorrect. He's second. Oh. Um, Heath. Yeah. Um, Josh Jacobs. Just keep guessing, guys. Who leads? Who's got the most carries inside the five yard line? Hmm. Nick Chubb. Second, tied for second with Jamal Williams. Just get a list of the teams up. It will help you. AFC. North or south? Mm. <laughs> uh, you both are wrong mm. Joe Mixon leads the NFL I didn't want to lose my candy well no you don't lose your candy you just if I get, guess wrong one more no, time I would a, have you get a gross one added you don't lose oh. if you weren't listening to the rules well he only has Joe Mixon only has one touchdown despite having nine carries from inside the five yard line one touchdown from that range all right next up who leads the NFL in End zone targets. There are three players. Actually, I'm sorry. Devontae Adams leads with 10. Who's next? There are three players tied with nine. Who has nine end zone targets? Wide receivers only or anybody? Anyone. Okay. Dave. Dave. Elsie. That's two wrong guesses for both of you. You're one wrong guess away from getting some yucky stuff. Dave. Dave. DK Metcalf. He's one of them. Way to go. All right, we got two more on the board. End zone target leaders after Devontae Adams. Dave. Dave. Stefan Diggs. Oh, Heath. Put something gross in Dave's candy. Oh. Uh, I'm going to give him a toothbrush. No, nope, he's got to be candy. I disagree. I, I accept toothbrush as an answer. He's oh. getting some terrible things in his bucket that I've gotten. Slide, a my slide, toothbrush. Okay. Uh, Heath, you got any guess? Dave, you got any more guesses? Mike Evans. Oh, Dave, give him something gross. Uh, I once got a piece of bread for Halloween. <laughs> you did not. I swear to God. What kind of bread? White? At least. Uh, I, I think it was white. The, okay, the white person bread. who answered the door didn't even know it was Halloween, didn't have any candy. Went into his house, came back a minute later, and threw a piece of bread into my bag. 
Zach Ertz. Oh. Zach Ertz. Oh. <laughs> I will move on here. Uh, Wait a minute. I got one right. So don't I get a candy? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Yes, you do get a candy. That's right. What would you like? I will take a full stuffed sausage Giordano's pizza, please. <laughs> I don't know where you go trick-or-treating. Uh, the I'm treating are, myself, man. Give me one of those bad boys. The answers are Allen Robinson, DK Metcalf, and Cortland Sutton. They all have nine end zone targets. Allen Robinson has nine end zone and, targets. And he has at least one in every game. So do you see buy low opportunities here on Allen Robinson, DK Metcalf, or Cortland Sutton? What do you think? Well, you've got washed, hurt, and no quarterback. <laughs> So uh, Sutton nearly had a touchdown late last week. Gardner made a really good play on the ball. Otherwise, it would have been a touchdown. He's he had nine targets last week. I would not panic if I had Sutton, but if you're in a league where somebody is panicking, yes, he's a buy low. All right, who leads the NFL in yards per carry? Running backs. Running backs. Darn it. Uh, yeah, and I'll just tell you there are four running backs who are averaging. More than six yards per carry. Can you name them? So th- those are. Oh, the- we, can, we can name any of the four. Any of the four. Hold on, I buzzed in already. Okay, you can both get right answers. Go ahead, Dave. Ken Walker. Ken Walker is correct. Pick another. Candy. Khalil Herbert. Khalil Herbert is actually number one. So yes, you both. All right, both of you pick something yummy. Burnt. Uh, I will take a bone-in ribeye. Okay. Thank you guys for you ruined the game this time, not me. Now we've got Khalil Herbert and Ken Walker. Making it better. Who are the other two running backs who have averaged six yards per carry? Nick Chubb. No. Oh, oh, wait. I got another one. Dave, 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 Dave. Dave. Travis Etienne. Yes. Go ahead. What else? Okay. Do you want? I will take, hold on. I will take <laughs> Oreo cookies on top of a uh, 12 ounce chocolate frozen yogurt with hot fudge. <laughs> okay. I don't know right. why I'm overweight. Uh, D- uh, Heath, any other guesses? Dave, any other guesses? There's one more player who's averaging six yards per carry. Hmm. Minimum carries? Uh, 40, I think I did. Let me see. You don't even know? You didn't... I'll tell you how many this? carries. I'll tell you how many carries he has. He has... 57 carries this year. Okay. Tony Pollard. <laughs> no. Uh, and it's a running back. Yeah. Obviously. Um, you know what's really nice under a plate of burnt ends? Just a piece hmm. of bread. You <laughs> soak up all that sauce yes. and juice. And a, and a toothbrush after. I, I co sign. Okay. Um, Who is it, Adam? I'm going to let you guys each give each other one other gross thing just for fun. Go ahead. Like, give them mounds or whoppers or something. Milk I don't know who those makes those things, and I don't know if they have been or will be no, a potential they're, sponsor. They're not, they're not. I think we're fine. All right, milk duds for Heath. Heath, what are you giving <laughs> me? We have poo-pooed so many products, and then years later, it's... Guess who's going to sponsor the show now? It, <laughs> um, so sorry, Milk Duds. Airheads. Oh, that's a te- those are delicious. But okay, now Dave gets delicious airheads. All right. Uh, the answer is, I'll give you one last hint. He is a teammate of one of the three players who are averaging six yards per carry. Khalil Herbert, not Walker, Travis Etienne. Oh, it's Dave. Yeah. Rashad Penny. God, Penny, you want to, you want something else, or do you think you deserve something else? In the, in the I think I do deserve okay. something else, Adam, because I got a correct answer. I will go with a one hundred grand. Oh, there, and you that's go. not the candy bar one hundred grand. I'm talking <laughs> about one hundred grand in cash, right in my Halloween bag. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Schaefer, does it even make sense to read the buckets? Yeah, no, we're we have nothing. Dave has like a porter house, a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, airhead, stuff pizza, stuff pizza. I think Dave wins, but Heath is going to be able to brush his teeth. We're going to finish the show with some rest of season oh, rankings. Right. Rank them rest of season: Ramondre Stevenson, David Montgomery, Miles Sanders. Give the names again, please. Ramondre Stevenson, David Montgomery, Miles Sanders. Sanders, Stevenson, Montgomery. All flip flop Montgomery and Stevenson. Sanders number one though. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Number two, Travis Etienne, Damian Pierce, Ken Walker. Rank them rest of season. Walker, Pierce, Etienne. Walker, Etienne, Pierce. Why Walker number one? Because he's awesome. And how about you just got done showing the world that Seattle had two running backs average six yards per carry. Yeah. It, 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 it's but, uh, but ET, ETN's one of them, too. ETN's in there, too. ETN's been great. I, I, my worry is what happens when he takes on too much work. Still an okay. awesome running back. Start him, no doubt. By the way, Pierce has 13 catches in his last three games. I said nine. Uh, Walker has two catches in his two starts. <clears throat> okay. By the way, explosive run percentage. That's defined as 12-plus yard carries uh, mm -hmm. with a percentage of carries that go for 12 or more yards by True Media. Ken Walker is number one. Travis Etienne is sixth. Damian Pierce is 29th. Minimum 40 carries there. All right, this is a good one, I think. Rank these guys rest of season. Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, Michael Pittman. Olave's first. Olave, Pittman, Thomas. Agreed. Okay, why Pittman over Thomas? Um, he's playing football. <laughs> when do you think yeah. Thomas will come back? It's a the great question. Never know. How many licks did it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll pop? <laughs> the last commercial I saw was three. One, two, three. Uh, all right. Well, I believe Mr. Owl is a follower on Twitter, by the way. Of you? Yeah. Oh, cool. I like Tootsie Roll Pops, too. Russell Wilson, by the way, is practicing. Just saw that. So, got a good chance to play this week. Hooray. Uh, rank them rest of season. Actually, I want to just spend a little bit more time on Olave. Do you try to sell him or what? Because are you worried about him when Landry and Thomas, specifically Thomas, come back? No. Not that worried. Not enough to trade him for whatever you can get. It, uh, once again, if, if somebody's willing to overpay, let me give you an example of what an overpay might look like for him. Um, Brian Robinson and Christian Kirk. Uh, no, no, no. No? You you would rather have Olave? I would. Uh, okay. I wouldn't. I'd rather have those two. I would take uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Leonard Fournette. Yeah, <laughs> that would be an overpay I would take too. Would you take? Hopkins? I was trying to dial it down. Straight what about up. Hopkins straight up for Olave? Who'd you rather have? Hopkins. I've got Hopkins higher than Olave. All right. Uh, last one: Juju Smith-Schuster, Amari Cooper, Gabe Davis. Rank them rest of season. You know, I, I can't help but think that Cooper. No, Davis Cooper Juju. Davis won. Wow. He has not had six targets in a game. I yeah. know, but he's just so explosive in the perfect offense. Yeah. It's probably Cooper, Davis, Juju. I think, I, I know, screw it. Cooper, Juju, Davis. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not a Davis guy because he's not getting a ton of targets. He's just getting a ton of touchdowns and yards, whatever that means for fantasy. That's only been two games, though. We uh, saw a lot of it late last year. Too. Week one. I, I, uh, if I looked at, in case anybody cares, where Gabe Davis's upcoming opponents rank in 20 plus air yard completions allowed. In other words, do they give up long pass plays? They rank 8th, 14th, 20th, 28th, 20th, 23rd, 14th, 23rd, 10th, 10th, and 23rd. 23rd, the last one is week 18. So, you know, pretty, no, nothing terrible there. Some teams that give up a lot of big pass plays kind of an interesting stat it depends a lot on who you've played and we're just you know we're, we're not late enough in the season where i'm making too much of that stat oh i had one more how about that i didn't even see it there at the end jalen waddle debo samuel amonra st brown rank them st brown debo waddle yeah that sounds right i think it's really close between debo and waddle you were going to take waddle over debo okay St. Brown, Debo, Waddle. That's it for today's show. We'll talk to you tomorrow with Starter Sit for the AFC home games. Appreciate your time. I uh, hope you all have as delicious Halloweens as Dave and Heath have, uh, trick-or-treating at Morton's Steakhouse and whatnot. We'll talk to you later.